I'm going to be truthful about this because when I originally filmed this video, I had everything set up. I had like a screen share, I had a video, and then when I went to edit, half of the audio was gone. So I'm going to be essentially voicing over what I talked about when I screen shared. But I'm going to be talking about how I planned my travels. I think a lot of times people, I've actually like asked around with people around me, how do they plan travels? And it's always so interesting to see how people actually plan their travels. Some people don't even plan. Some people plan like the days and like where they're staying and how they're getting place to place, but they don't actually plan what they're doing. Some people plan through like literally not planning. They actually just book a tour and then they do everything for you. I'm, um, I'm the type of traveler where I try to maximize as much as I can. So I Google or research everything I would possibly want to do. I actually like, one of the ways that I do things is that I go on YouTube and look up top things to do in XYZ area or top places to eat at in XYZ area. And then sometimes like if I see it on Instagram from like all the searching that I get, like I get targeted on these particular content that I start to send it to Addison and then I see like what he thinks and if he wants to do it, we'll do it. So. The way I plan it is that I actually plan what we're doing first and that determines the actual timing and duration. Sometimes we have an idea of like the actual timing. Like let's say for example, I my favorite time to travel is the shoulder season, so spring and fall. So that way in winter time it won't be too cold or too hot depending on where you're looking at. Or summer, it won't be too hot or not too crazy because a lot of kids are off from school at that time. So a lot of families go out to travel. I try to sh always travel around shoulder season so it's like a really good moderate temperature and it's also like a not too peak season either because of all the kids that go out of school. So that's what I essentially do is like now that I'm not in school anymore I can pretty much choose any dates. I actually don't really travel around particular holidays because it's just more expensive, busier, and in general, like we do cat sitting now. <laughs> in the past, I used to travel whenever we have the opportunity to, like a three plus day weekend, I try to travel. Now I actually kind of like, okay, do we want to do cat sitting or do we want to go on off peak day, day or week? And for me personally, if I have the opportunity to see and accumulate all that PTO and use my PTO versus actually spending more money then I'm gonna take, I'm not going to, I'm just gonna take more PTO. For me particularly, I'm gonna be actually screen sharing you my Vancouver, Seattle trip uh, itinerary. This is exactly our itinerary. I did not tamper it in any way. I didn't hide anything because this is literally from a year ago. So there's no way you could possibly stop me. You can see the vlog over here as to what that trip was, but I'm gonna walk you through how I did it. To be honest, like I'm not going to do this real time, so I'm actually probably going to be just doing a screen share again, but I'm basing it off of the original screen share that I took. But it looks like I'm talking through how I started in the first place. But here's the actual itinerary that I did. Link down below for the actual itinerary. If you wanna walk through instead of like watching the video, you can kinda like use this as a podcast or a workshop where you open the link and then you just hear me talk. But essentially the first thing I do is after I outline what we're doing or what things we like to do, because I like to maximize everything. So the duration is actually not something that I'm thinking of. Normally, I, if I have the ability, I will ask people I have that have been to these locations and say, do you think this is like a reasonable number of days in this particular area? Do you recommend like splurging in more days in one particular area or not even going to a specific area? We're actually doing that with our Japan trip with my friend Michelle, who's been to almost literally all the places that we're going to. But again, I don't want to like waste a day if like we're just going to be find, like trying to find things to do. It's one thing to look at what to do, but it's another thing to like realistically how long you're actually going to stay there. So a lot of times like you can technically put 20 things in one day and you might actually be done early or you could put one thing in one day and it will literally take the whole day. So I always have to try to find someone I know that has been to that area, give me their recommendations as to where they should splurge in terms of what they think is worth the time or money. Uh, in my case, a lot of it is like, I try to plan things based off of, okay, how many days of activities will I realistically have? And then I plan from there. So if you have a, if you see like the tab I have on the bottom, it actually says things to do. That's usually the first thing we do. And then what I do after that, I kind of like map it out 
and Google map the locations of where all those areas are. And I actually have multiple Google Maps open at this time. I cluster them up in like real area places. Like let's say if it's like all in one area, then I know, okay, this, and I actually do it in like walking distance. I always prioritize walking distance more than anything. So I use the walking distance. I plot all of these things out. Google Maps allows you like, I think up to 10. So I put everything. And then once I realize like, okay, there's one that's like all the way over there. I think like, okay, maybe I should do that as a separate day. So I actually open another Google map and put that. And then I start to see like, okay, each time I put that location into the original Google map, if it's like closer to that area, I move it to that area. So that way I'm like maximizing the time I spend in a particular area and less so on the actual commute area. So in this case, I actually would have, this is how I would determine how many trips I would make. If like in Seattle, honestly, it was one of those places where I had a lot of places in one area. And I thought, okay, that, that won't be the whole day. But when I went there, I was like, we're done. <laughs> so we ended up going back to a few places or we went to go explore. Or, uh, and we, of course, like we planned our trip based off of the, the like activity we spent on that day. And we can move things around unless we have things booked in which we can't. But we also use this to be able to plot out where our hotel is as well. But for the first thing we do first is flights. Once I figure out how many days of vacation we actually have that we would be able to maximize a location. The way I plan my vacations, by the way, is that I think of it as like a one and done because I have so many places I want to go to. Once I'm done with Vancouver and Seattle, I may not be going back until like a much later on. So I'm not thinking I'm just going to go there. I can come back next year or two years because I don't think I have that luxury. Every single time I go on vacation, I try to check off another location, explore a different area. I don't want to go back. I think like Japan is one of those places that I have gone back, but just because it's a different purpose, different reason, different time. When I went last time, it was like with my friends. This time is actually with my husband as my honeymoon. And I also added Singapore in there too. In the case of Vancouver, Seattle, I've been to Seattle before with my mom. But what is different is I haven't been to Vancouver. So I try to put some kind of like twist of what I have done and what I haven't done. So that way I have something to look forward to. Not to say that I don't look forward to having like another trip with like whoever I'm with in the same location. Like for example, I went to Colorado twice already, once for work and the other one's for fun. Of course it will be very different that way. But I try to maximize it that way. Like I try not to go to, to, to like the same place twice unless it was like really that great. Um, I guess like the Japan trip is kind of an anomaly because he's never been to Japan. So naturally we're gonna just go to the good places, the things I thought was worthwhile for that particular trip. But first thing we're gonna book a flight. I actually go to, I put in like the before New York, then I go put the, the location Vancouver. Um, of course I put like multi-cities, two people, economy. And then after that, I just kind of use that as a sense of, I open the actual price map and I see where the prices are like when it comes to New York to Vancouver. And then I actually open Google flights again and do New York to, to Seattle and see, which prices actually look better that way and vice versa on the return trip as well. Some flights for some reason are cheaper one way or the other and some dates. This is actually where it helps me determine the dates as well. And normally when I'm looking at this, this is actually when we're already ready to book. So if we see a price we see, we book it right now. Um, that's usually we notice that the prices are cheaper than usual. If we see that the prices are very high, that's actually when I'm like, okay, well maybe we should wait a little bit longer or maybe we should reconsider the dates. Again, nothing has been booked. The flight is usually the first thing we book. Uh, but we are actually like really flexible with the dates when we look at the prices of the flights. Like we'll actually dictate a lot of my trips around the prices of the flights. Uh, very rarely do I actually have the dates already and then I plan the flights because I know that way it's like usually harder. Um, I also try to plan the trip sometimes around three day weekends. I've actually started to kind of move away from that. If I have like an official three day weekend where a lot of other people take that day off, then I try to avoid those weekends. But if it's like, I don't know, veterans day, not a lot of people have that day off. I, I also don't have that day off, but I actually like would plan around those anyways. Sometimes we don't, but that way we can kind of have a sense of like, how do we say PTO without actually like cutting into our rover rover peak season kind of thing so we try to look at the flights 
and at this time this is how where we have a sense of and i actually like stock this kind of thing but you have a general sense of how much the flights the flights are actually like in each way and then you can figure out which place you go first in our case we actually did vancouver first and then we did seattle um and i there was no real reason i really was probably just flights when i first did this so then after that we look at it and we see play around with the dates a little bit and now we know like okay we're doing like a 10 day trip we just kind of like move things around but if it's like 11 days or 9 days or 10 days we're flexible as long as the dates work um and we for honestly like most trips i've done it's just to one place this is probably unique where there's two locations or two areas that we're traveling to but as I said, like if I'm going to a particular area, I try to maximize what I'm doing. If I'm going to Vancouver, I'm probably going to go to Seattle since they're all in a very similar location. And so that's what I do when I actually plan the flights. And now I'm actually showing, what am I showing? Am I screen sharing? Okay. And then I've moved over to Google Maps at this point. This is just an example of like how I plotted a particular day and then how I move things around to see how it's actually going to play out. Then after that i actually see like let's say the whistler mountain that's like one particular day that's like so far away there's no way you can do that by yourself and this is actually where i asked my friend michelle like so do you think whistler mountain's worth it and also like how many days would you spend there and sometimes they're just like yeah it's not worth it or sometimes they say like oh it's worth it if you do xyz and i'm like if we're not doing that it doesn't matter in my case i actually wanted to do zip lining. unfortunately zip lining was not allowed at that time or it was not open at that time so that's what we ended up doing and then i plot this out i have like the same template i use on my itinerary and i just kind of delete all the text and i keep the same format but we do like dates the dates are like usually like second third thing that we do date of the week is what the dow also second to third thing we do location we know we put that down when we do the things to do in google mapping um and also like the hotels as well well, the where is easy, like, because if you have the location column, you have the where column, the type is just an easy way to understand what we're doing there. Like if you see a restaurant or a place like that just doesn't sound like anything particular, like Granville Island, I would say sightseeing. Like maybe, I don't know, some places like you can have a like, like a tiki restaurant and you could call that an island. So I just do that as a way to have an idea. And also lunch and dinner is like a good way that I'm like particularly sectioning it out. The what is kind of like, okay, what are we doing in this location? Even though the type may be obvious, I always do that. And then I also provide a link there and when, if there's like a particular reservation we have, or if we have like a particular booking and the price and the notes as well. The notes is usually where I would put like a confirmation number. So that way, if we ever go there and we don't have the ticket, we would show that. And that way, like, we don't even have to have Wi-Fi or data or anything like that. I would just show them the confirmation number. I like Google Sheets because that way I can actually download offline, have the addresses open and everything. So in case I don't have data or maybe I have no service, I have an address and I have the Google Sheet downloaded offline. And I have, like, a general sense of the structure. That way I can always ask, like, someone nearby who does have, like, a phone or data or something like that and say, like, hey, where is so-and-so? Most times I'm really actually looking at the Google Sheet when we're actually on the trip. I kind of look at it briefly, like, okay, we're gonna do this next and I put my phone away until we do that. Once we do it, I look at that next thing. And sometimes we actually go through things a lot faster than we think. It's usually we go, things, go through things faster than we think versus we go through things slower than we think. Sometimes uh, it's actually mostly like we look at, okay, we're gonna go plan this trip and then we're gonna go put all these things there Sometimes we're like, oh, it's just that. <laughs> Maybe we're not into a museum. Maybe we're not into this particular restaurant. Maybe we're too full. So we pivot around, but usually things that we've booked and um, like have reservations, we like definitely go to, but everything else, if it's just like a walk-in or something chill, we're just kind of kill, we're just like chilling around. Like for example, the bike rental place that we ended up going for is not the bike rental place we moved on with. So that's like an example of it. Um, there's also like a lot of research that goes into when I actually do this It's like, let's say the bike rental, I want to know, do like, do they have to give me my, do I have to give my ID? Is it cash or what, or a card or something like that? Um, is there, are they like really strict on like when I drop it off or where I drop it off? So things like that. And I also have a sense of, 
a lot of it's like honestly YouTube and Googling and asking people around it, like, what do you recommend? Do you think this is like something worth my time? And most people I know actually travel a very, they like the same things I like, except for I don't drink. <laughs> so I don't actually care about alcohol or bars or anything like that. I can't work with the food. So I usually get a lot of food recommendations. And in uh, Vancouver specifically, I actually met up with uh, someone that was in my pro bono consulting program and in technology consult co technology consulting community. So we did meet up. That was impromptu. We were like, hey, where do you want to go for dinner? And we ended up going for ramen. And it was like a little double date because he brought his girlfriend and I brought Addison. And he gave me recommendations like, like where we should go for lunch. And we ended up going there for lunch too. So uh, definitely check out the vlog. So I actually wanted to kind of go over this because I think it's like a different way of planning. Everyone has like a way of planning that like they optimize for something. I was talking to my cousin when we were in Thanksgiving weekend and he was like, oh, I just plan the dates and then I just show up and he goes to like hostels. But when he goes to hostels, he like go bougie with the one a private one bedroom and just goes there for the community. He's a solo traveler. Um, so he like optimizes for that and he like hitches on to trips and other activities with other people which i think is cool but for me i'm like a maximalizer i want to google everything i can possibly do at this place and then i look at like what i actually would re really care about every time i go on a trip i'm thinking about what did i actually care about versus what did i actually end up doing because sometimes they say like oh look at this amazing museum you have to go and then if it's just like a normal museum to be honest i'm not a museum person I just don't put that on my list unless it's like a place that's like meant for museums like for example dc smithsonian like maybe then i would consider it if there's something really cool um, that i would consider it especially if it's like reasonable price and i think it's like worth the time that i'm going there so that's how i plan my trips hopefully i didn't miss anything in the original video the original video is like 18 minutes long this one's a little bit more informal because i'm literally just talking this one that i originally filmed was like i was literally screen sharing how i would have actually done it but i'm just like i literally just edited the video and i'm like are you serious halfway through the audio went out so hopefully you like this kind of more let me know if you actually like this more informal style versus like a little bit more informational I'm literally talking off the cuff here. Whenever I plan a video, I just write the concept or the or the theme or the particular thing I want to talk about, but I don't have a script, I don't have a structure. In certain videos, I would have a structure if it's something I really need to make sure I get across. This one does not have a structure because I optimize and things I want to do so that way it's like a bucket list kind of thing, but also maximize that time and in the way that I would not come back. But there's a lot of things as well that are kind of like you figure out on the way there because a lot of times people like in the past when i've worked with people to go traveling or to go hang out i had a extreme structure like literally where i literally counted to the minute what we're doing where we're going time to commute and it had no wiggle room now it's like it's similar it's like somewhat similar i plan for chaos but i plan for that versus like this is what we're doing and i'm like no flexibility in my case it's just a structure set myself or for success and then everything comes later so i have like a structure of like things to do if we end up finishing things early we have more things to do if we have running late then i'm like okay now we need to prioritize but honestly that rarely happens i always tend to have more things to do the, that we need to do or more things that we would want to do and so much time and but a lot of times it really is like also who you're traveling with but a lot of times if i'm planning the trip and this is like how i am traveling no more most times i'm actually planning the trip like this with addison uh, rarely is it with other friends because a lot of friends they they're not as <laughs> they don't they're not as rigid as me a lot of friends of mine they either like okay we're just gonna plan these days and we're just gonna figure it out closer to the day Personally, for me, I like to figure out what we're doing and then go from there. So that way I can like set myself for success. I'd rather have too few things to do than to have too much things to do and then just squeeze it in. And it's just like chaos and you're running away, running place to place, your hotel so far away. And then you just like lose that opportunity. I like to like capture all those opportunities, have a setup for success. So comment down below. How do you travel? Hopefully this is okay. I want to know like what do you optimize i think a lot of people i know they optimize for around food and drinks <laughs> i prioritize around food but like i still want to do things 
a lot of times the way I travel is like I like to do sightseeing I like to do some like hands-on stuff like for example if we're gonna go to Vancouver I want to do the biking I don't want to just walk or I don't want to just like go to a museum I want to go biking or I want to go to a tour we don't like to drive um, I have not driven in a while and Addison doesn't even have a learner's permit he actually no he does have a learn yeah he has a learner's permit but he doesn't actually know how to drive because it's been a while and he failed the drive the road test a few times but I don't want to rely on him I don't want to rely on myself especially in a different area that I'm not familiar with and I also don't want to do a car rental especially I'd rather have it in a more familiar area or at least not a familiar area but a place with like I'm okay to like have mistakes if I had to like a middle of nowhere kind of thing so we do a lot of day trips like Whistler Mountain was a day trip so that way I can spend myself sleeping in the bus or in a van and I don't have to worry about actually driving the entire time and worrying about oh my god something's gonna happen or like I don't know where to go or navigation or like the service went out kind of thing uh, because if Addison doesn't know how to drive that's like a huge issue for me that like I don't have that safety blanket that oh something happened to me who the hell is gonna take me to the hospital who what happens if the ambulance ain't running so that's like always running in my head so I always want to have like a safety blanket like a backup if anything that means I can't drive because I have no backup so in this case I actually book those day trips I'm okay with doing that those are the only kind of things I really book um I actually was in a family where a lot of them book Chinese tours and I'm like I really don't like Chinese tours because they have their own vendetta like I've literally remembered when we were in Switzerland my mom was like booking this Chinese tour and they made us they literally put us in like a, a store and we could not leave until we bought something because they were saying like oh this is part of the quota for it and I'm like and also we go to Chinese restaurant like I don't want to go to a Chinese restaurant in freaking Switzerland I want Swiss food okay so it's just like things like that like I like to be the person that plans everything because I want to do what I want to do but also I want to do what the locals like to do I actually rarely talk to the locals though and asking what they recommend it's more of asking people I know that have traveled there that's like the one criticism I have except in terms of how I plan things is that sometimes like i actually sometimes when we go to a restaurant i say like what do you recommend to do nearby i do that but we do that the day of we don't like plan near like long like well in advance of like oh someone said go do this thing um sometimes we do if i have like a coworker that has been there or is like literally living there kind of thing or if it's like someone who's like from that area give me their recommendations so that's what i like to do let me know down below oh my god this ending is long <laughs> let me know down below like how you like to plan to travel if you even plan at all where's your next vacation i will tell you for my next vacations it's actually going to be japan and singapore i may or may not be going to boston before that i'm gonna probably try to save my pto before that um but iceland is on the docket because we do have our ticket that um or at least our voucher with iceland air that we had to cancel during the pandemic and it's expiring in 2025 so i have to kind of book that for next year um but we might do that in the summertime so that's all i have thank you so much for watching and getting this far let me know down below how you like to travel and see you guys next time